assignment was to use my DP registry database to, that I created two weeks ago to compare the hemoglobin A1C between male and female patients. The first thing I did was create two views, one that uh, creates or replaced the view. Um, I have my A1C, my lab work date, my patient last name, patient first name. I joined my tables and pulled sex where my sex only is M or male. And I did the same thing for my females, except my sex was F. So I ended up with two tables, a female and a male. Um, each of the resulting tables has 10 each. And I can take this data in a file and actually export it to Excel, to a comment eliminated file. And I'm going to actually do this to double check my aggregate data in the next part. Or in real life, I could also use this um, data file to graph the data for a presentation or maybe even run more sophisticated statistical regressions if this data were somehow part of a larger clinical study. The next table that I created is this is this A1C by sex. I have my, um, my sex. I counted up the patient IDs, my average A1C, my standard deviation, my minimum A1C, my maximum A1C, again joining my two tables, my demographic and my lab work, and then I'm grouping it by sex. So you can see I have um, 10 patients, which confirms what I had in the last, uh, when I had originally segregated them into the two tables. I have my average A1C, I have my standard deviation, I have my minimum and my maximum. Just to confirm um, that I have the right data, I am going to look at my female original table. I'm going to scroll up to the, oops. I'm going to scroll up to the top. And I do have my minimum value because I did sort these by A1C. And I have my female as minimum is 5.7 and my maximum is 8.8. .8. And this is confirmed by this. If I do go to my Excel database, I can, this is the data that I pulled in from that CSV file. Again, I can um, use my uh, functions um, and actually average my um, A1Cs by female, and I end up with a 7.09, and that matches what I have here. Looking at the resulting view, there's one more step that I can do to make it a little bit easier to, to use or visualize, and that is actually round those numbers. Um, I'd like, I rounded the A1C and the standard deviation, so you can see that I use some round subqueries uh, to the hundredth place for the average A1C, which is a little bit nicer to look at. I'm dropping those um, zeros to the right and rounding my standard deviation um, to the 10,000th place, uh, making it a little bit nicer to look at. Um, and I call this uh, A1C by sex formatted. So just looking at the data, comparing the two, um, my um, average for the females is actually a little bit lower. My minimum A1C uh, is lower and my max for females and my maximum A1C for my males is higher. Um, my standard deviation, however, is actually higher for the females, meaning that there is more variability for the values for females around the mean than for the males, even though um, the males is a little bit higher. So the second part of this exercise was to further identify uh, patients who have an A1C greater than 6.5, which would qualify them as pre-diabetic or just not well controlled given their current medication regime. This list could be used to contact this group of people to require another appointment to look at further medication, additional testing, like more frequent eye exams, or more, um, more extensive kidney function um, testing, such as um, more frequent BUN and creatinine levels to look for um, kidney kidney damage. Um, so what I did for this exercise was very similar for what I did for the first. Um, I created a view for the 
the first thing I did was I just took and found all of the patients that had that six any uh, A1C greater than 6.5, and that left me with 13 rows. You can see there. And then I further segregated them and made a table for just the females and then just the males. My resulting was I ended up with uh, females. I ended up with six rows and seven rows for my males. Finally, just as I did for the previous exercises, I created a table comparing the two groups. So again, aggregating that data. Um, and, and this one I actually um, started out with the rounding function subquery. Um, again, it's much nicer to look at with um, the A1C to the hundredth place and the A1C average, uh, standard deviation to the ten thousandth place. Um, because I eliminated those who have an A1C in the quote-unquote normal range, my count is obviously much lower. I have six females and seven males for a total of 13 uh, patients. The A average A1C and minimum A1C is much higher than in the previous table or t previous query uh, because I've eliminated those other, the four females, three males with those low values in the normal range. The standard deviation, again, is much smaller for both males and females. Again, getting rid of those um, outliers on that low side. And the standard deviation still remains higher for the females, meaning that even with eliminating these low um, values for the A1C, there's still more variability in the A1C values for the females than for the males. Um, obviously, the maximum A1C is going to be the same since I did nothing to um, change that group um, that's getting pulled. However, my minimum is going to be um, much higher because I get rid of those um, low outliers, the ones that are less than 6.5. These are a great resource for creating queries. Um, you know, really restricting what one sees for data. The restriction can keep some private data weak people or don't need to know or uh, avoiding data overload to the user. Um, there are updatable and non-updatable views for this exercise. I did use um, verbiage that would be an updatable view, which means I could use the views that in the previous examples. Um, to update, insert, delete statements to modify the data in not only my view, but also in the underlying table. If I wanted to restrict data access to allow users to view only, I would use that slightly different MySQL code and use a create view verbiage instead, as I did in this example. Um, it would further protect the um, security um, so that um, no one could just update this uh, A1C and the lab work date without um, going here since um, this lab work date should be linked to the fasting glucose and GTT. Um, if the A1C and lab work date are updated but the glucose tolerance test and fasting glucose are not updated, then it, it, these two are going to be linked with an incorrect lab work date, which is going to negatively impact the integrity of my data. Thank you very much. Um, and if you have any questions, let me know. I'm going to quickly, uh, slowly scroll um, so you can take a look at my queries. If you have any questions, please let me know. I'm going to start at the top.
If you have any questions or, again, need me to send the copy of the um, actual scripts, let me know. Otherwise, thanks so much.